All right, let's start off by saying Barakat Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rucha Kodash. Welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is Prophecy Must Be Fulfilled. Now, this video has been uh, been sent around to the different brothers in the different camps. Um, and I didn't watch it, but I know of some of this madness that's going on here. I've seen some of the pictures, you know, and I've witnessed over the years, you know, different bullshit that's going on, you know, in these different camps pertaining to the Passover. And, uh, you know, it's sad that you would have this, but at the same time, when that thought came into my mind of it being sad, you know, and, you know, just a damn shame of this going on, the next thought in my mind was, you know, prophecy must be fulfilled. That's why, hence the name of the title, Prophecy Must Be Fulfilled. So these things have to happen because what you have to understand is that everything that's written in the scriptures has to be fulfilled and will be fulfilled. So what you see going on here is a necessity that has to happen as aggravated or you know upset as you may get about this or we may get about this it is a necessary thing that has to happen because you know it's just it's just that you know it's it's something that has to happen because this is what the lord said would happen you know so i'm gonna you know go into a couple of precepts on this and see you know how far spirit you know will you know go with this whole thing um but you know nevertheless let's get started just bear with me one second Okay, wait a minute for one second. All right, so let's get into it. You know, the scripture that came to mind was the book of Jude. Now, Elder Yashwamba a while back did a lesson on some information that he found and the reason why the book of Jude was written. And it was pretty much going into... How back then, you know, you had a lot of opposition that was coming against the truth, you know, of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And it's no different today. You got to understand that the majority of Israelites, just dealing with Israel, not even dealing with the other nations, the majority of Israelites, you know, will not believe in this truth. And those Israelites that call themselves going into the scriptures that don't believe in this truth are also going to be the main opposers to this knowledge, to this truth, you know, and they're going to give their opinions, they're going to, you know, try to um, disrupt the truth, they're going to try to just, anything that they can do to push their narrative, you know, on to the, to, to the world view. Now, if you notice, those of you brothers that have been here since around 2007, 2008, you know, you had a lot of these individuals that had, had no clue or idea that they were Israelites. And then once they found out that they were Israelites through the men that were teaching, all of a sudden now they, they found a platform where they can push their bullshit. And what they do is they take parts, pieces and bits of different groups that they like and mesh it all together. You know, that's, that's not how you do this. You know, there has to be one way. You know, there's one faith, one power. You know, there's no two, three, four, five different ways to go about the, the truth, you know. There's only one way, all right? But nevertheless, you know, it has to be so. So let's get into this book of Jude. It says, Jude, the servant of Yahweh Shai, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified uh, by the Most High, the Father, Yahweh Bashem Shai, and preserved in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach and called. So 
it's not just being called. It's being called and also being a part of the elect, you know. And we don't know if we're the elect or not. We're doing the things that the elect would be doing. Lord's will, if we endure to the end, we'll be saved. This, you know, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Give diligence to make that calling and election sure. But the main point outside of being called and sanctified in this in this um, in this uh, verse here that I want to highlight is the word preserved, because once you come into this truth, you're supposed to be preserved. All right. When we go to the word preserved, the word preserved is terejo, terejo, right? It means to attend to carefully, take care of. So what does that mean? That means that every day. The Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, through the Holy Spirit, feeds, protects, nourishes, and maintains these individuals that have been sanctified, that have been called, that have been, you know, uh, preserved. So every day the Lord, you know, keeps maintenance. This is, this is a well-oiled machine that the Lord maintains every day. That's why he says that he will come and sup with them. Meaning share his most intimate thoughts and feelings with You know, so it, this is what's important is You know, we know that we've been called We don't know if we've been chosen or not But we know that through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Through his Holy Spirit We're being preserved You know, from the, you know, the perils of, of this day Like when you have meat Meat in the ancient world before you have fridge Fridges or refrigerators, refrigerators, they were preserved by salt, and the salt would be put on it to preserve it. And then when you were ready to cook it, you would, you know, wash the salt off, and you know, cut it up or whatever the case may be. Well, this truth, this knowledge, is that salt. That's why Yahweh Shai said, if the salt has lost its savor, it's no good for nothing but to be thrown on the dunghill. And this is what's happening with a lot of these individuals. They've come into this thing, they've learned the truth, right? They've got the salt. And then they started adding all kind of additives to it and, you know, diminishing the actual salt of the truth. The, the truth stands alone. It doesn't need any other gimmicks or anything like that. Just like salt. Salt is uh, uh, something that doesn't really need much. You know, you could add, you know, your pepper and cayenne pepper and everything like that. But salt stands out. And salt enhances the flavor of food. And that's what this truth does. So those that are being preserved, you're being preserved daily. You know, that's why we give thanks to Yahweh Bashem Shai for this knowledge. It says to guard metaphorically to keep one in the state in which he is. Because many will not stay in that state. You're going to have many that's going to, you know, leave the truth. They're going to deviate. They're going to follow another path. Matter of fact, I'm glad you brought this out, bro. You know, the brother Hawad. This is our Romans 16 and 17. If you could post the other verse, Baba Kasha. Yep, the GMO doctrine. That's right, bro. Uh, Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them because this is going to happen. The apostle Paul said it best. He said, after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. And you see these grievous wolves entering in among us. You know, it says, and also of yourself shall teachers arise, you know, uh, to, to uh, draw disciples after them. All right? It says, for they that are such serve not our Lord Yahweh Shai, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. This is why the Apostle Paul said, look, I, when I came to you, I didn't come to you with man's speech. Come to you with, you know, these big fancy words and, you know, giving a, a, a dissertation or given a, a you know a speech you know that that will will uh, woo you because of the the great way that you put it together no you should you supposed to be wooed by the truth by the scriptures by the you know by these words that are coming out of this uh, out of this book the proper understanding that's what you're supposed to be wooed by it says to observe so in other words be on vigil so Yahweh Bashem Shai is on vigil with his elect. He has a constant vigilance upon them, a constant preservation. It says to reserve, to undergo something. See, so the elect are being reserved for the times to come, the perils to come. 
That's why it says, the knowledge of wisdom shall be the stability of that time, the strength of salvation. Yahweh Shai said, I am always with him, even unto the end. And that's why he said, pretty much, that he will come and sup with those if they open up when he knocks. You see? So let's go back. I thought that was heavy, just that word, just that word, one word alone. It says, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence... To write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. Why? Because the word contend means to fight. This is where you get the, uh, the uh, apologists, right? Or the defenders of the gospel. And we are the true defenders of the gospel, not like those phonies. You should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Why? Because this same truth that we're teaching is being attacked from all angles. From Esau, from ninjas that call themselves Israelites, from these uh, individuals that are, that are Israelites, that don't know that they're Israelites in the churches. You know, from all walks of life, all different philosophies, you know, from them, them demons that... Call, excuse me, call himself the black conscious community. So this truth is being attacked from all angles. And that's why, you know, we here at Great Millstone, you know, take pride in, in, um, in defending the gospel. You know, anytime something comes up, we're always at, at the front line through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Shai through his Holy Spirit out there addressing all of these issues. You see, and if one brother don't get to it, another brother will get to it. You might have five brothers that might do a lesson on one particular thing, or ten brothers, you know. And sometimes you have a whole slew of camps and different brothers that descend on just one topic. Because it's of great importance to, to keep the doctrine sound. You see, it says, for there are certain men crept in unawares. So this right here, certain men crept in unawares, has to be fulfilled. You know, it has to be fulfilled, and it will be fulfilled, and it is being fulfilled. So let's look up two words here. Crept in and unawares, unless it's all one word. Let's go back up. Let me see. Crept in unawares, all one word. Uh, Paris, 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 Duno. Paris, Duno. Paris, Duno. To enter secretly, see? Slip in stealthily, to steal in. And that's pretty much what they've done. They've, they've come into this thing, you know, and unbeknownst to them, or maybe beknownst to them, because some of them, some of them are, are spies. You have your spies out there that have, you know, infiltrated the truth, this truth, which they're stupid because if they've been in this thing for a minute, they see that there's nothing going on. All that we do is just teach the word. When brothers get together, we teach the word. Brothers get together, we talk about the truth. We talk about, you know, different issues and different bullshit in the world too. But mostly it's about the truth. And that's all you get. There's not one brother out there of any camp that has ever heard any of us, even when we were in their presence, you know, in, in, you know, in different brothers' homes, Talk about anything else but the truth or, you know, maybe the basketball game or boxing or something like that. You haven't heard brothers talk about anything else but this. So by now, you would think that these individuals would say, you know what, man? These brothers ain't so bad. They ain't really ain't going off. You know, I'm, I'm going to back off. Matter of fact, fuck this organization I'm with. I'm down with this thing wholeheartedly. But they can't do that because this is what the Lord said, that they crept in unawares. Who were of old, who were before of old, ordained to this condemnation. So in doing that, they're condemning themselves. Let's go to the book of Matthew 18. They're condemning themselves. And they were ordained. So no matter what, they could they couldn't get away from, they couldn't get out of it. You know, um, when you watch that movie, uh, Book of Clarence, right? It's heavy the way they set that up because you had the individual that played Judas Iscariot, right, who, who betrayed the Lord. He really didn't want to betray the Lord, you know, if you really look at it spiritually. 
But that was that was what he was ordained to do. Because even in the movie, they kind of show you that he didn't really, you know, he was like fighting not to dip the bread in the sop, you know. He was fighting it, you know. So he really didn't want to do that. Not that it went down that way, you know, but he didn't really want to do that. But he figured, since he was a zealot, he figured, you know, well, if, if I force the Lord's hand, I've seen the miracles that he could do. You know, I've seen the power, so maybe he'll just, you know, he, I know he's going to just let, uh, uh, unleash hell on these uh, Romans, you know, and then we can get out of here the sooner. And then how do we know that that, that is a, a possibility or that that actually happened? Well, after he betrayed the Lord, what did he do? He didn't really want that money. He gave the money back. And when he went and hanged himself, you see, so that shows that he really didn't want to do that. But at that moment, when they were at the Last Supper, you know, keeping the Passover, it says Satan entered into him. And once Satan entered into him, Yahweh Shai said, that which thou doest, go do quickly. Now the other disciples didn't know what he meant. They thought that he, he sent, sent them to go on an errand to go pick up some supplies. But no, Yahweh Shai already knew, okay, this is the time. Satan is in this dude now. He's going to fulfill what, he, what the scripture said about him. And boom, he went and did what he had to do. All right? So this is Matthew 18 and 7. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. So offenses have to come because they are written in the scriptures. It says, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Yeah, so woe to that man, destruction unto that man. So we have to have these examples today because the scriptures say in Jude, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace, which is Yahweh's uh, great sacrifice, of our power into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord power and our Lord Yahweh Hamashiach. And how do they deny him? In works. They deny him in works. They don't just go out there and say, you know what, the hell with the Most High, the hell with Yahweh Shai. No. It's the works that they do, the things that they do, that show that they're against the Lord Yahweh Bashem and they're all about serving their own belly. Titus 1 and 15, unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They, meaning these false prophets, profess that they know the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Shai. But in works, they deny him. What are the works? Well, you can see right here. You know, taking the Lord's Passover and making a mockery of it. You know? And this is something that's been going on for years. This guy flipping hats and dancing, you know, singing. He couldn't make it in the world, you know, so now he got a platform where he can woo the people and that's how he, you know, he, through his gimmicks, get the, the suckers out there. You know? But this has to happen. So it says, they profess that they know the Most High, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Now what is reprobate? Someone that is void of judgment. They can't discern that they're going off. And some of them know that they're going off, but they don't give a shit. Adokimos. Not standing the test. Not approved. So they're not approved. So if they were... If they were going through the process of that chemical solution that they use or the fire solution or the fire that they use to test metals, they would not pass the test. They are not gold, silver, or precious stones. Some of them are wood, some of them are hay, and some of them are stubble. The ones that have been in there longer, they're more like the wood that takes longer to burn. The ones that came in and went out, you know, and after a few years, those would be the hay. Eventually they burnt up. And the ones that are stubble are the ones that peek in and go right back out. Properly used of metals and coins, that which does not prove itself such as it ought. Unfit for unproved, spurious, reprobate. Right. And right here it says castaway, rejected. This is that reprobate silver. 
you know, it's covered with dross and it's not even real silver. It, it, it's what they call like what they call fool's gold. It has the appearance of gold, but it's not gold at all. Taint gold at all. Uh, what is that? Is that First Timothy six? Mm, I think it was in here. Let me see something. Second Timothy three. No, it was I was in the wrong. Second Timothy three, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. So the Lord has given you instructions on what to do. How to identify these individuals and what to do once you identify them. Mark them. Get the hell away from them. Why? Because that, the scripture said, little leaven leaven up the whole lump. So if you're in that crowd, eventually those demons are going to jump on you. So you have to get away from that crowd. You have to get away from those individuals. You know? So going back to Jude, they denied the Lord, Yahweh and Yahushai, verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. So now Jude, the Apostle Jude, is going back in time to explain these individuals. They were among the congregation, but eventually what happened? They got destroyed because they were ordained for this condemnation. It says, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. You see? And the angels which kept not their first estate, going all the way back to the beginning, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Right, and you're going to have a judgment where certain of these angels are going to be delivered because these angels or messengers are, we, we are those angels and messengers. All of, all of uh, Israel, you know, are all those, those messengers. Now you have some that's going to be delivered and you have a whole lot of them that are going to be destroyed. And what are the chains of darkness? That's these bodies. You know? Because it wasn't like that at the beginning. The bodies were built to live forever. You know? But even at that point, it was, it was not perfected yet. Because there was an evil root that was sown in Adam's heart. Why? Because you see the fruits of it today. It had to go down that way because prophecy must be fulfilled. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Yeah, because we still read about it today. That's why it's known as eternal fire. Because it's still it's not burning to this day. Even the prophet Ezra was saying that it was that that, that land was was smoking until that until the day, which that would have been <clears throat> that would have been roughly that would have been roughly around 1,500 years in the future that that fire was still burning. Was it still burning then? No. But the memory of it, which is still spoken of, which is still read in the scriptures, is still spoken to this day. That's why it was set up as an example to them that should afterwards live ungodly. It says, likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. And that's how they do. They defile the flesh. By what? By their actions. Doing all this shit. Now, let's say you wanted to do this, right? You wanted to have your own little party or whatever. You, go ahead, by all means. But don't use the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai's Passover to push this bullshit. You know? Because it ain't right. But these are the gimmicks. These are the gimmicks that they have to push in order to, you know, be able to you know, get more followers, make more money. Despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Right. And here it is, the men that are trying to correct them and show them the, the right way, they get upset with them. And that's why, you know, Great Milson is the most hated camp out there. The scriptures say, they, they shall hate him that rebuketh in the gate. And that's why they hate Great Millstone, because every time somebody goes off, they're right there on the front lines addressing the issues. And, they, and it's looked at as hate and not looked at as correction. 
because they hate reproof. They hate correction. And this is why you have individuals that learn a few scriptures. They learn a little from here, a little there, and they go start their own thing because they don't want to come up under the order because they don't want to come through the straight gate. They want to climb up a window. They want to do, they want to, you know, so they can shine so they don't have to answer to anybody. You know, there's a structure to this. There's order to this. You know, the scripture says you have entered into other men's labor. So if you have entered into other men's labors, the scripture directs us as obey them that have the rule over you. So how can you obey them to have the rule over you if you don't come up under the order? So that you can be brought up the right way. You left to yourself, guess what happens? A, a child left to himself becomes willful. And th therefore, those actions of yours and that lack of you know, discipline will get you destroyed. Like the young flyers, you know, the, the new uh, the new sensation, the new uh, doo-wop sensation, the young flyers, you know, you know, doing those, uh, uh, you know, fancy moves. Uh, I forgot the, the dancer's name. There's two dancers back in the days. They was bad as hell. One of them was in a movie uh, with, uh, um, who was it? Bill Cosby and... Um, my oh, man, I forgot his name right at this moment. It's been so long since I've mentioned his name. The Levite, the Levite brother. I forgot his name right now. I'm sure it'll come back. But though they they're doing those moves out there, you know, trying to woo the people. But they 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 they're doing they they're doing wrong. They, you're doing wrong. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Does not bring against him railing accusations, but said, "The Lord rebuked thee." Yeah. So it says, but these speak evil of those things which they know not. See, they speak in evil of things they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts, because that's exactly what they are, brute beasts. And those things, they what? Corrupt themselves. That's why the Apostle Paul said, we are not as others as co that corrupt the word of the Lord. Because they're making merchandise, as it states in uh, Second Peter, the second chapter. Woe to them or destruction to them, for they have gone in the way of what? Of Cain. They murdered their brother. That's why the majority of Israel, what did they do? They slew the prophets. They killed the prophets. Why? Because the prophets were cursing them out. Because it was the Most High cursing them out. You know, cursing, you know, Jake out. And they looked at it as a man. They said, ah, let's get this mother, you know. But guess what? The blood of all those prophets is on these Israelites still. Even some that know that they're Israelites. You know? It says, uh, and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward. Right. And pretty much they are, some of them have sold out to make money. That's why they they they, they are selling everything that they nailed down. As the Ephraim says in the in the in the in Spanish, you know, they would have sold the the the, the uh the nails of the cross, if they could have, or something, you know, there's something, there's a saying, something like that. No, even the nails of the cross, or something like that. It says, and perished in the gainsaying of Corey. Now, Corey, when you go back to, I believe that's uh, number 16, the 16th chapter, that was a group of well known individuals back then that were leaders of the people. It was three of them, Corey, uh, let me see, it was uh, Dathan, Corey, and Abiram. And then there were 250 men that were with him, that were renowned men. They were, they were leaders. People knew them. And they said, you know what, Moses? You're taking too much in yourself, man. We're going to come in here. we also men of the Lord, too. So we're going to come and show you how it's done. We're going to, you know, we're going to take over some of this, you know, some of this uh, shine from you. And what happened? The Lord caused the earth to open up and swallow them, their families, and everything that they had for being presumptuous. And that's what a lot of these individuals are today, presumptuous. And when you correct them, instead of sitting back, taking inventory in account of, of what they're doing, and maybe they might be doing wrong, you might be doing wrong. they like, nope, they, they're going straight up into defense mode. You know, oh, you, you GMS guys, you just haters. You just hate, you just hate us. Meanwhile, they're selling prayers, they're selling Hebrew names, they're selling baby names. You know, they're selling all kind, making all kind of merchandise of the people's, uh, of the people of the Most High. 
And Jake's already catching hell. You know, you fucking no worse than the goddamn poverty pimps in the churches. It's a goddamn shame. That's why the Lord said, these are spots in your feast of charity. Let's go to the word spots. A spot is a blemish. Spilas. A rock in the sea, ledge, reef, metaphorically of men who by their conduct damage others morally, wreck them as it were, right? And you had um, Philetus. Uh, let me see. Let me see if it was Phi I know it was Philetus. I think that was First Timothy, if I'm not mistaken. This is a good one, 2 Timothy 2 and 17. And their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, right? Because the things that they're saying are corrupting the other, you know, Israelites that are coming into the knowledge. But if you're a part of the elect, guess what? You won't be corrupted because the Lord said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. This is uh, 1 Timothy 1.18. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, right? Because we're warring a good warfare, a spiritual warfare, because you have a lot of individuals coming up against the truth. You know? Uh, I've seen the uh, company die. What time the fire devoured 250 men and they became a sign? Uh, notwithstanding that the children of Korah died not. Okay. So I know I know some of the family members had died. Uh, they, the famous congregation who strove against Moses and against Aaron, the company of Korah, when they strove against the Lord. Con. So, you know, I, I go back and, and read that. You know, because I know there was a section where it said that they, that their, them and their, and they, all, everything that they had got taken out. Uh, so I had to go back and check it out. The water, though, brother, the water. It says, uh, 1 Timothy 1 and 19, holding faith and a good conscience. See, holding faith and a good conscience. This is why the Apostle Paul directed Timothy to continue in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of. He told the same things to the Colossians, so on and so forth. Which some, having put away, put away what? Faith, good conscience, which means what? The sound doctrine became tainted. It became sick. Which some, having put away, meaning faith, have, uh, concerning faith, have made shipwreck. So they were shipwrecked, and they also, in their speech, in going co and going against the truth, are uh, making others to, go sh to be shipwrecked. It says, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. And that's what these guys are doing. They're blaspheming. So let's go back. Jude 1 and 12. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they Right, so that means that they're spots, they're blemishes, and they also distort the word. And this is why you have to have the defenders of the gospel. This is why you have to earnestly contend for the faith. When they feast with you, right, because at one time, some of these same individuals were among the congregations. And they were keeping the Passover with brothers, so on and so forth. Feeding themselves without fear, right? Because they had no fear. You know, here it is. They're eating the, work, the, the body of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, unworthily. No fear at all. You know, I hope I'm, I hope I'm, uh, I'm doing you know, the right thing. I hope the Lord ain't upset with me. I hope I'm not eating the, the Passover unworthily. They don't think like that. Which, which brings to mind them individuals, the old Boston crew, not the brothers that are there now, but the old Boston crew. They would get up there, you know, and, and you know, get up on the podium and read the scripture, you know, in 1 Corinthians, you know, it says eating the body of the Lord unworthily, like they was eating it worthily and making you feel, you know, like shit, making you feel little, real small, you know? But they themselves had no fear of the Lord. And here it is, they were eating unworthily. Clouds they are without water, right? Because they are clouds, but they have no water. The water is this truth, this knowledge. Remember Yahweh I spoke about that the living water. They have no water. And the water that they did have is stagnant. Got all kind of shit growing in it. Carried about of winds, right? These different doctrines. That's why you see them change up like the wind. You know, one minute uh, the MOTB is one thing, then the next minute is something else. You know, other individuals are, you know, going so deep into, you know, into uh, 
you know, trying to prove the validity of the Bible. The Bible is not the word of God, but the words of God are found in the Bible. You know? You know, getting entangled in that bullshit when this thing is about faith. Let me see. Uh, and Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord hath sent me to all these works, for I have not done them on mine own mind. If these men died a common death of all, if they be visited a visitation of all men, the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing in the earth, open her mouth and swallow them up, and all that appear appertaineth unto the right, and all that appertain to them. And they go down quickly into the pit. They shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass as he had an end, as he made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that had that appear that pertain unto Korah and all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed up, uh, upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. Yeah, the water, the water, all the Yeah, so I knew that that, that you know, but I guess um, the uh, sons of Korah, or the children of Korah, as the brother put in the other, uh, the other uh, scripture in uh, Numbers twenty-six, they didn't. Uh, no, 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 that's cool, bro. No, that's cool. It's cool. No, you, you that, that was good because it showed that I believe Korah's sons uh, didn't get put to death. So, I, I mean, I would have to go back, like I said, and read that particular one, both of them, six, number 16 and 26, you know. Let me see something. All right, so now let's, let's move on. Carried about a winds, trees whose uh, fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Right. So these these individuals are trees whose fruit withereth without fruit. They're fruitless trees. And what did Yahweh do to that fig tree that had nothing growing on it? He cursed it and it died. Now that is a representation of these individuals, you know, that are, that are, uh, that are, uh, Bad fruit. All right, let me get this other precept so I don't forget it. And then let me go back. Matthew 7 and 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Right, they looked the part, but their actions did not, in actions they deny the Lord. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. That's why the Apostle Paul said they will not spare the flock. And Apostle Paul was in tears because he was, you know, thinking about, you know, all the work that he put in, the sacrifices that he made to build this church up, to build brothers up, you know, and to think later you will have demons that will come and destroy, you know, or try to destroy destroy what, what the Spirit of the Lord allowed him to build, you know? You shall know them by their fruits. There we go. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? The answer to that is no. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. And you see it by their actions. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, meaning cut down, and cast into the fire, because they will be destroyed if they don't repent. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. That's why the Lord said that. Now, let's go real quick. Oh, shit. My bad. Let's go from there to St. John 15. And one. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. See? So if you are a... a, a, a Good fruit or good branch, the Lord purges it and makes it to bring forth fruit, more fruit, better fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. Right. And that's why these individuals deny the Lord, Yahweh Shai, in their actions. They mouth, they give them, you know, they give them, oh yeah, yeah, I was shy. They keep speaking the name of the Lord, but in works, they deny him. 
as we read in the book of Titus. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. That's right, destroyed. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, and this is the, it's the key. And this is why we read in, in uh, Jude that the Lord preserved those that are preserved. The, the Apostle Jude said that those that are preserved in the Lord. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so you shall be my disciples. All right. So going back to Jude, in the middle, uh, towards the end of the 12th verse, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. So they have no foundation because they denied the true foundation, which is Yahweh Shai. Raging waves of the sea, forming out their own shame, right? You see how waves come crashing in? They come crashing in indiscriminately. They don't give a shit who they crash up against. And then once the, the waters crash against the stones, what do you see? You see foam that, 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 that uh, forms, right? And then eventually what happens? That foam just dissipates and disappears. And that's how these individuals are. That's why they'll be here. They'll go strong. They'll go hard in the paint. And then all of a sudden, they, they're gone. You don't see them anymore. And we have many, 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 many examples inside joke. Wandering stars, right. They're just wandering stars. They're just floating from one, from one point to another. And some of these guys are so bugged out that they, they, their doctrine changes. Like the scriptures speak about a fool changing like the moon. You know, they are constantly changing. It says, uh, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever, right? Because if you if you in this knowledge and your eye is evil, what did the Lord say? You know, that his that your whole body is going to be dark. And oh, and how great is that darkness? See, that's why it says, walk ye in the light while you have the light. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, which are the angels, to execute judgment upon all. And to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. You know, so there is a judgment. As the scriptures say, you know, that you may know that there is a judgment. These are what? Murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts. And this is why they don't want to be under anybody, you know, as a leader. They want to be the head. This is why every group that these certain individuals go to, they had a problem with. Because they didn't they don't like order. They want to be their own man. And a lot of them are not fit to govern themselves. Because they they, they don't have the spirit of the Lord with them. That's why they, they say all kind of bullshit that just comes to their mind, do all type of stupid shit. But still in all. It's something that has to happen because prophecy must be fulfilled. And their mouth speaketh great swelling words. And you hear them. I mean, just, I mean, they, they, their, their pride is to the, to the moon. You know, their pride is to the quasars, you know, out there in a, in a black hole somewhere, in the Milky Way. Having, having men's purses in and admiration because of advantage. And that's why the IURC looks down upon GMS because they look at us as bums. But they look at them as prestigious because they got, you know, they got, you know, schools, you know, they got programs, they all dress fancy, everybody's dressed the same. But hey, just because you look the part don't mean you're the part. It says, but beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. And this is what we're seeing. We're witnessing these things. And it must be fulfilled. It says, uh, it says, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. And if it's written, it must be done. So let it be written, so let it be done. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. They're carnal men. They separated themselves because they're carnal men and they don't have the spirit. But they have that form of godliness. 
They look the part, but inside they're hollow. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And them, them individuals do not have the Holy Spirit working with them. This is why they'll do all kind of madness. Keep yourselves in, in the love of the Most High, looking for the mercy of our Lord Yahweh Shai unto eternal life, because this is what we're fighting for. We're fighting for eternal life, and that fight includes fighting ourselves, you know, keeping ourselves, you know, on the straight and narrow path as best as possible through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Shai, you know, and, lo go and looking for eternal life. And this and, and, and that in, entails or also uh, comes with defending the gospel, being slandered, you know, going through whatever it is we got to go through to get there. That's why the, uh, the Apostle John said, you know, or the, the angel said to him, um, they followed follow the Lamb whithersoever they went, whithersoever he went. And if some have compassion, making a difference, yeah, because you have some of these individuals in these different camps that are part of the elect that will be delivered. And that's pretty much what these lessons are for. The, the rebukes, you know, on these different camps is for those members that are among them that are part of the elect. That they may see this and, they, and then the spirit work with them and say, you know what, man, I got to get away from these guys. And that's happened before, you know. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Because the scriptures say, you know, if you... If you uh, Pretty much, I'm just merely paraphrasing in the book of James. If you, you know, turn a brother from unrighteousness and ungodliness, you know, and turn it back to the faith, you will cover a multitude of sins. You know? And that's what these lessons are for. If nothing else, for exhortation, for edification, and for those members that are part of the elect that might be caught up in these different groups in the hopes that they can watch these videos and, and, and get away from them individuals. Hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Right, which those garments are what? These false philosophies. Spotted garments are the false philosophies. The true garments is the truth, this truth. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Right, because why? Because we are being preserved. Lord's will. Pres preservation keeps from falling, uh, keeps from decay. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, of his glory with, ex with exceeding joy. Yeah, because there's no in-between. You're either going to be clean or you're going to be unclean. You're either going to be righteous or you're going to be wicked. It says, the, To the only wise power, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and ever, so be true. All right? So let's go from there to the book of Matthew 20, uh, 13 and 47. It says here, a dragnet, right? Now, what is a dragnet? It's a net drawn through a river or across ground to trap fish or game, right? And that trapping of the fish or game, right, you're going to have some that are good, and you're going to have some that are bad. And this is why the Lord set up the disciples to be what? Fishers of men. So going back to Matthew 13, 47, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net <coughs> that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So in other words, when this word goes out, right, you have the right fruit or the right fish that get brought in, and then you have the bad fish that get brought in too. You have, you have in this truth, you have a lot of octopuses, a lot of sharks, you know, a lot of whales, a lot of clams, a lot, a whole, whole slew of crabs, the sidewalking crabs, you know. You have, you know, catfish that have been brought into the truth. You have, you know, uh, your bottom feeders, scavengers, you know, your shrimps, your lobsters. You know, you got your black lobsters, you got your Latino lobsters, you know, you got your Native American lobsters, you know, all kind of unclean fish too. But then you have... You know, your salmon, you know, you have your, your rainbow trout, you know, you have your, you know, your uh, um, red snappers, so on and so forth that are clean, that are brought into this thing. But a lot of them are unclean. 
It says, so shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. So when you see these individuals doing these things like this, don't get mad. This is just the Lord severing out the wicked from among the just. As, as, as the prophecy states, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, which is a nuclear destruction slash the lasers from the chariots. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And then, then they're going to know, like, damn, I shouldn't have effed with the Most High. Yahweh Bashem Shai. But then it's going to be too late. You know? So with that, I pray that you brothers and few sisters have been edified. Just remember, prophecy must be fulfilled. You know? So with that, I say Shalom.